Question number four. Question number four, it says, give us a circle and it says find the center of the circle and the radius. The circle has the equation x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 10y minus 8 equals 0. So to find the equation of this circle, in standard form first, root the x terms, x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 10y minus 8 equals 0. Complete the square for the x terms, that's x minus 2 square minus 2 square plus y plus 5 square minus 5 square minus 8 equals 0. That is now x minus 2 all square plus y plus 5 all square minus 2 square is negative 4 Minus 5 squared is negative 25. Negative 4 minus 25 is minus 29. Minus 8, that's negative 37. Bring it over here, that's 37. So now we can tell them the center of circle. The center of the circle is 2, negative 5. And the radius is equal to the square root of 37 units. Remember, radius is length. So that's it, that gives us four minus center is two negative five, and the radius is root 37. The next part, part two, it says find the tangent at 311. Find tangent at 311. So generally what I love to do is draw my circle and look at it. If the center is 2, negative 5, 2, negative 5, then 3, 11 is, 3, 11 would be somewhere up here. This is the point 3, 11. Let's call it P, right? So first we need to find the normal at P. So first thing is the gradient of the normal is equal to Y2, 11, minus Y1 of negative 5 over X2, which is 3, minus x1, which is 2. That works out to be 11 minus minus is plus, so that is 16 over 1. So that's the gradient of the normal. So that implies that the gradient of the tangent is equal to negative 1 over 16. Remember, that's the gradient of the tangent. Gradient of the tangent is minus 1 over the gradient of the normal. Now, since this is the gradient of the tangent, then therefore the equation of the tangent at 311 is y minus 11 is equal to the gradient of the tangent negative 1 over 16 times x minus 3. You can multiply through by 16 if you want. Write this as 16y minus 16 times 11 is 160 plus 11, that's 171. Just to make sure, 16 times 11, sorry, 176, that's equal to, multiply through by 16, this becomes minus x plus 3. So to bring it over, bring over the x, so that implies that the tangent is 16y plus x equal to, Bring over the minus 176 is 179. So that's the tangent. 16y plus x equal to 179. Now you could have leave your answer from right here. You can leave your answer from this step. But I like to put it in, in the form of a line like this. You know, x plus 16y is 179. How much marks is that? We're giving away four marks for this. Four marks. That's it. Alright. Part B says, 
Show that the curve with parametric equation. X equals 3 plus 3 sine theta. And Y equals 3 cos theta. Show that this is a circle. So remember how a circle looks. A circle is x squared. X, x minus a squared. This is a circle. Just to write it down. Remember what you're trying to show. A circle is x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equal r squared. That is a circle. So since we write that down and that is our circle, so we may go ahead and solve this. First thing is I need to make sine theta the subject x minus 3 over 3, that would be sine theta. And this is saying y over 3 is cos theta. But guys, guess what? Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equal 1. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. So since sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is 1, x minus 3 over 3 squared plus y over 3 squared is equal to 1. So expand it, we get x minus 3 all squared over 3 squared is 9 plus y squared over 9 equal 1. We we'll multiply through by 9, x minus 3 squared plus y squared equal 9. So guys, from this, we can clearly see that this is a circle. This is a circle with center. It's a circle with center three zero and a radius of three. So that's it guys. That proved that this is a circle. Circle with center three zero and a radius of three. And this question was actually worth it was worth five marks. I'll give you five marks. That's it. Nice and easy. Soft. Nice. Part C. Part C says two position vectors are represented by OA and OB. Determine the angle between OA and OB. So it gave us OA. Vector OA is 1, 2, 3. Vector OB is 1, minus 3, 2. And they want us to find the angle between OA and OB. So to find the angle between OA and OB, we have to remember that the cosine of theta where theta is the angle between A and B is given by OA dot OB over the magnitude of OA times the magnitude of OB. That's it. So let's need to work on OA dot OB. So OA dot OB is equal to OA dot OB 1, 2, 3 dot 1 minus 3, 2. Guys, I couldn't come up with better numbers. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, come on. So work this out. 1 times 1 plus 2 times minus 3 plus 3 times 2. That's 1 minus 6 plus 6. That's 1. So OA that OB is 1. Now what's the length of OA? The length of OA is equal to the square root of 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square. So the length of OA is equal to 1 square is 1, 2 square is 4, 3 square is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14. That's the square root of 14. Now the length of OB is going to be the same. 1 square plus 3 square plus 2 square. That's also the square root of 14. So therefore, the cos of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 14 times the square root of 14. 14 times 4, square root 14 times square root 14 is 14, so that's 1 over 14. And so theta is equal to cos inverse of 1 over 14. 
We'll put that in our calculator. Plus inverse 1 over 14. That's 85.9 degrees. So that is 85.9 degrees. So in other words, we can tell him that the angle between OE and OB is 85.9 degrees. You can tell him that that is the angle. The angle between the two vectors is 85.9 degrees. And you're giving us a whopping 8 marks. They give us eight points for this. Oh, we literally don't do nothing. So that's it. We literally get eight marks for do nothing. Nice. All right, part D says determine the vector equation of the plane which passes through two, five, three. And it's perpendicular to 4i plus 4j minus k. So we want to determine the vector equation of the plane that passes through the point. So the point that they give you, I'm going to call the point P, 2, 5, 3. And the plane contains P and is perpendicular. This symbol means perpendicular. And it's perpendicular to 4i plus 4j minus k. Now, guys, anytime you have a plane that is perpendicular to a line, anytime the plane is perpendicular to some line, that line is a normal to the plane. That's the normal to the plane. So what they're telling you is the normal, let's call the normal n. The normal is 4, 4 minus 1. Then remember the equation of a plane. The equation of a plane is equal to r dot n equal. The equation of a plane is given by r dot n equal a dot n. Where a is a known point, n is the normal. So it's r dot 4 minus 4, 1 equal to the known point, which we know is 2, 5, 3 dot n. 4, 4, negative 1. So work it out now. Remember, R represents X, Y, Z. R represents X, Y, Z. So this becomes 4X minus 4Y plus Z is equal to 2 times 4 is 8 plus 5 times 4 is 20 minus 3. So the equation of the plane is 4X minus 4y plus z and that is equal to 8 plus 20 is 28 28 minus 3 is 25 that's your answer 4x minus 4y plus z equals 25 that is going to be option da -da 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 -da. oh it's not a multiple choice why am i talking about option 4x minus 4y plus z equal 25. That is 4 marks, not option. 4 marks. That's it. Nice. That takes care of module 2. Stay tuned for module 3.